when doing experiments with farmers, there is sometimes confusion about how and where to replicate, or even what constitutes a replicate. In this brief video, I will explore this topic a little and make a recommendation. Let's start with clarifying the concept of a replicate. A replicate is an independent instance of a treatment applied to an experimental unit. Although the term is often misleadingly used to mean a set of units, each of which has received one of the treatments. Conducting an experiment involves applying treatments to experimental units. Every time a treatment is applied to an experimental unit, a replicate of a treatment is created. I often hear researchers describe part of the design of their experiment as, farms are my replicates. This can be interpreted in more than one way, but it most often means this. I have an experiment where a farm contains several experimental units to which I have applied my treatments. I have put one replicate of each treatment in the farm. The set of experimental units within each farm can be considered a block. They're thinking of the traditional researcher's experiment, with its multiple blocks containing a replicate of each treatment laid out side by side. And in their description, they convey the fact that they have now put one replicate of each treatment on each farm, which in turn can be considered a block. This is often a sensible design. Having more than one treatment within a farm makes sense, as comparisons between treatments can be made within each farm, and there is gain in the precision of these comparisons. This will be true if experimental units within the farm can be considered to be more homogeneous than those in different farms. You will probably be recalling the concept of blocks that was part of your initial training in experimental design. However, it can be unhelpful to think of experimental units within farms or farmers as replicates. Central to the concept of replication is that you are repeating the same treatment in what you hope are similar conditions. But farms and farmers are all different. The environmental difference between farms, even those close together, is often obvious. In addition, farmers vary in resources, constraints, objectives and attitudes. This social and ecological variation is very likely to influence performance and preferences for the treatments being compared. So where is the replication we need to reach good conclusions from the trial? The answer to this problem lies in gaining a better understanding of the reasons for the variability that is observed across farms or farmers that might influence treatments before we establish the experiment. This will allow us to select farms or farmers that are more comparable and, in consequence, the experimental units within each farm can better fulfil the role of replication. This is a simple example that I used in a previous video. I argued that in this case, we need to replicate across farms that have the same level of soil organic carbon and management quality. I'm not arguing for just any farm available to be considered suitable for the experiment. To qualify as a farm for this experiment, a farm will need to have the appropriate level of soil organic carbon and management quality. I also suggested that if we have about 30 farms in the study, then about 8 of each type would be appropriate. Here, type is defined by the factors that we think will be important in determining results, and we replicate by having many farms of each type. So the design does contain replication. The replicates are not just farms, they are farms of each type that has been carefully selected on the basis of the knowledge we have about what factors we think will be important in determining results. We can now make comparisons of treatments on different farms of the same type. So what about replication within each farm? If you have more than one replicate of the same treatment within farms, you will indeed get a more precise estimate of treatment effects from those farms than if you just had one replicate on each farm. But there is a trade-off to make. Replicating within farms means that there will be less resources for including many farms in the study. Yet, it is variation between farms that's going to be most important. Replicating within a farm means you know whether there are consistent effects of treatment within that farm. But that's not interesting to any other farmers. 
Farmers or scientists outside of the experiment need to know that there are consistent treatment effects across farms, as that gives you some confidence that the effect will also happen on further farms. That is, it gives you confidence that you have a repeatable result that can be exploited by further farmers. So it is replication of different farms of the same type that gives the information that we generally need, rather than replication within farms. Finally, a word on reducing variability in on-farm trials by excluding farms or farmers that are perceived to be contributing to the variability, such as those that have a labour shortage or those with degraded soil. Yes, you can exclude them, but be aware of the limitations of your result. If you exclude those with the degraded soil, then you will not be able to conclude something like integrating legumes increases maize yield, only that integrating legumes increases maize yield on farms with intact soil. You would not be able to say anything about what might happen on degraded soils. If you excluded those with labour shortages, then you could not conclude that farmers prefer the new variety, but farmers that do not have a labour shortage prefer the new variety. Make such choices strategically, based on the aim of the project and the research route that you are taking, and be aware of and honest about the limitations to your findings. You can never do everything, and excluding some types of farms and farmers from the study will be necessary. But make sure that those who are excluded are not important for your project objectives.